For the first time in the history of Quantum Leap, a leaper has gone beyond the chronology of his lifetime and returned to a time before his birth. Ian Wright, a team member in Ziggy Authority, confirmed that Ben's submitted code disabled various security measures, such as the prohibition against entering history prior to the leaper's birth. According to time travel theory, altering the past before one's birth could prevent one from ever being born. Ben is putting his life in danger by leaping, but he is also putting his life in danger by altering events that occurred before his birth date. In episode 3, Ben Song finds himself in the body of Danny Hill, a young boxer who is preparing for the match that will determine his future. This time, he is in 1977 Vegas. More facts about Ben are revealed as he and Addison strive to determine the issue in Danny's life and how to fix it at home. Addison overworks herself in an effort to get Ben home as soon as possible and learns that she needs to take care of herself because Ben could not be returning anytime soon. It appears like Ben's code has put him on a route that will require several leaps to get to his target. But just now, if he wants to make it through the events of this leap, he must train for a day to become a world-class fighter. As a result of the previous episode's events, Beth and Janice Calavici are back, albeit it appears that Beth doesn't want Janice to move forward with her plans. But the daughter doesn't listen to her mother, which raises questions about her intentions. What is Janice's true motivation for Ben's time travel? With the third episode, Ben's team learns that his time leaps are not random, which makes the plot of Quantum Leap more complex. They learn that Ben had marked numerous locations in time, including his destination, on his USB drive from the previous episode. Ben's leaps were once thought to be random, but it has since been discovered that, despite having forgotten his goal, he is actually in control of them. Ian notices that the route is similar to the one a satellite would take to launch itself deeper into orbit, after examining the pattern of his prior journeys. It could have been risky to go too far back in time, and if Ben had done it the first time, he might not have been fully prepared for the assignment that had brought him there. For this reason, he devised a strategy that would allow him to enter the past gradually, build speed, and eventually bring him to his intended destination. The team may be more ready for Ben's upcoming leaps, given that they are aware of the route he intends to pursue. Perhaps over time, this will also help them understand Ben's genuine purpose. Although this gives Addison and the others hope that they can bring Ben back home, a few new issues have emerged. The one most important factor that makes Ben's life simpler while moving through Ziggy. The supercomputer not only informs Addison of Ben's landing location, but also calculates the best course of action for him to take. It offers all the necessary details that are essential for rescuing Ben from awkward situations. Ziggy, though, wasn't at its best this time. It took a while to comprehend the facts that could have made or broken Ben's quest, so he and Addison had to use their wits to overcome the obstacles. Ziggy's state is puzzling, but Ian quickly discovers where the supercomputer isn't functioning at its best. It appears that someone else has access to Ziggy through a back door and has been utilizing it for their own gain. Naturally, that person is Janice. It is well known that Ben and Janice worked together covertly before Ben jumped into the past. Janice had previously informed Magic that Ben had approached her for assistance, but it appears that she wasn't entirely truthful. Janice visits Beth, even though she is aware that her mother's home may be under surveillance. After drugging Beth, she steals the items that Al has been hiding all this time. It appears that he had built a machine on his own, without the government's knowledge. Sam Beckett was still trapped in time at the conclusion of the first quantum leap, so it makes reasonable that Al would have looked for a way to return his friend to the present. Al was forced to continue the project on his own when it was shut down, although it is obvious that he failed. Currently, his daughter is in charge. Janice now has a way to contact Ben because she possesses both her father's hand link and an imaging chamber. She will undoubtedly utilize it to get in touch with him, or perhaps with another time traveler who is still trapped in the past. She might be able to remind Ben of the initial strategy thanks to her access to him. 